welcome everyone to this first of a, a very successful series that we're going to be pushing out over the next uh, few months here. So this is going to be, um, you know, a very exciting time. Data center is absolutely blowing up um, in the industry. We're finding a lot of interest with people wanting to get involved or changing careers. But data center has been by far one of Cisco's most quickly growing areas of expertise. So we're looking for a lot of new engineers out there to help support the new technologies that you know are coming down the line here. Um, so it's a great time for you guys to be involved in this type of study group. So a big welcome from uh, both Mike and myself and the rest of the team here for everyone um, you know to choose this uh, you know this certification path. So a quick introduction myself. Um, my name is Robert Burns. <clears throat> I've been with Cisco for just over five years. I actually joined back in the day as part of TAC, and um, I came on board right when we came out with a lot of the new products for data center. So when UCS was being envisioned, Nexus 1000, 5000. So I've really been along the whole journey that Cisco has been going from start to where we're at today. And I can tell you from experience, it's an absolute um, roller coaster, excitement ride. I've really enjoyed the time that we've had here so far. So what we're going to do here is we'll get rolling here into this first of our many sessions. Um, so the first again, just a big welcome um, from all of us and thank you for choosing the CCNA Data Center Career Path. As you guys know, um, we're going to be doing these webinars every week, so we'll have a different topic. And we really want to look to you guys to give us suggestions on any topics that you guys find you are having you know, either troubles with studying or you just can't find any kind of information on. If you want to suggest those um, topics through the uh, Learning Network, we'll be glad to throw up together you know, a presentation or address those topics. So we're going to have a lot of guest speakers you know, in addition to both Michael Brown and myself. We're going to pull in various experts across Cisco to help you know, address some of the various topics that are going to be covered in the CCNA. So everything from you know, WAS and ACE to OTV, Nexus 7000, you name it, we're going to have the right expertise giving you the information that you guys need to get your heads around the topics and around the concepts, as well as giving you some maybe, you know, here's some spots you really want to focus on during the course of your study. We're going to help have open um, a discussion thread for each webinar topic. So this being the first one, um, Matt's already got it opened up. And if there's any questions pertaining to, you know, any of the material, or if you want to go back and watch the offline recording, by all means, um, if you have questions after the fact, you can post them to the discussion thread, and we'll be happy to take those questions as long as you guys, you know, see fit. Um, and that leads into, you know, the recordings. Everybody can't make all the session times, and we do re understand that. So all these sessions are going to be recorded, and they will be made probably a day or two later. Um, we'll post them to the forum sites where you can go ahead and watch these afterwards. So just a quick uh, disclaimer, myself as well as the other instructors who are going to be presenting a lot of the material, um, we've actually been involved in contributing many of the questions to the CCNA data center as well as many other certifications. However, we aren't privy to all of the questions, and that's something we like to make very you know, straightforward. We are going to be teaching you guys to the topics and the requirements of the exams. We're not here to you know, tell you exactly what you've got to write in your questions for the answers. We want to give you the theory behind it and really get you guys skilled up so you guys have all the necessary skills that you guys need to be successful in the data center certification paths. So again, our goal here is really just to fill in the missing gaps. A lot of this will be responsibility of yourselves to take this back and you know, study on yourself, but we're really going to augment that as best we can. And we do understand there's not a whole lot of DC CCNA specific material yet. Um, a lot of that is in the works, and that's what we're here for. And that's what these webinars are geared towards, is to fill in those gaps and you know, give those additional experience that we've you know, amassed over the years to you guys and help you guys achieve your certifications. So just um, a couple notes on WebEx. You know, doing this kind of training has, has been very successful in the past for us. So as you guys have noticed, all your phones are muted. There's no audio for this session, which is fine. So like Matt had pointed out, we'd like everyone to use the Q&A panel for asking your questions. And now this serves for a couple reasons. One, it allows us to capture the questions. So if we want to do an FAQ afterwards, we can um, you know, draw these up and keep these recorded. 
as well as it allows all the other participants to be able to see your questions as well. And that helps, you know, people avoiding to having repeat questions, you know, once or twice. Um, if we have this available, you might have access to these two types of icons, which is a green check mark and a red X. And sometimes in various sessions, we might use these to prompt you for a question or say, here's a question, we'd like to you know, get your response back yes or no style. And one other thing we're going to be utilizing is, um, is WebEx polls. And this allows us to load up you know, some questions and get some feedback from you guys. Um, and that way it doesn't require any kind of voice interaction. It's really, I can open up a poll and I can let you guys, you know, give yourselves some answers here. So one of the things we want to do here initially is get an idea of what kind of experience everyone has. So we're going to open up our first poll right now. Um, and I'll probably get Matt to go ahead and open that up. And if you guys could take about 30 seconds or so, there's only seven questions. We'd like you to go through this and just rate your experience level on, you know, basic switching. What kind of experience have you had in your career, you know, to date? And if you've got none, that's fine as well. But let us know what kind of level of experience you've got for switching, for routing, storage, unified computing, um, just to give us an idea for future sessions. And if we find that there's certain gaps in various areas, we'll be a little more attentive and spend a little bit more time on those, you know, problem areas. So we'll leave that poll open for the next probably a couple minutes or so. So go ahead and um, work on that as you're listening to the um, rest of our presentation here. So our first topic today is going to be on the study plan of attack. So back years ago when I took my original CCNA, um, that was my challenge is, okay, how do I start off? Where do I start to learn? You know, networking was brand new to me and I really had no direction um, on where to go. Now, fortunately, after doing a bit of Google research, you know, back, you know, and it was only about eight years ago that I did my NA, there was a lot of material out there. So there was a lot of direction and a lot of great people put together some great books on here's how you should study and here's how you should approach it. With the data center one, this is a very new certification. So those types of books don't quite exist in the same fashion. You can still approach a CCNA as a, I'm going to be an associate level, um, and it's, there's two exams that are, um, are built up to give you the CCNA. And these are very specific to data center. So as the overview of this session, what we're going to do is talk about is what are the requirements for the data center CCNA. And most of you probably are aware, but if not, we'll just go through what the requirements are. We'll give you kind of an idea of how much time you should expect to invest in your studying. You know, how much reading time should you expect do you need some lab time? How much lab time should you expect to spend on this? We're also going to tell you a little bit about what kind of equipment and software is available. So there's a lot of um, you know, people get a little concerned because some of the topics on the CCNA do come with a very hefty price tag for the actual physical equipment. But hopefully we can you know, cut that budget down in, in quite a bit and give you an idea of what's available to you guys you know, at a free or a very minimal cost. We've got a bunch of books that we've posted on the um, Learning Network as well. So I'm going to give you on um, this deck as well as some ISBNs of some very useful texts that we've, um, we've developed over the years. And they really explain a lot of the good theory you're going to need for your first exam. And of course, we've got a, a great little feature with these webinars is we're going to be giving away 10 Cisco Press Data Center Publication eBooks per session. And we're going to do that by means of the survey. So we ask you to give a quick three or four question survey at the end of the session, and then we'll be drawing names and then you know, notifying those winners you know, that they've got a uh, free ebook that they can download. So let's take a look at the data center certifications for Cisco. So data center, again, only about five, six years old with Cisco as far as we've been pushing really hard with it. And now we've just got these three brand new certifications which have just come out. So we've got the NA level, so your entry level for data center. And we're looking at about one to three years experience. And this would be for a typical data center network admin. There's going to be two exams for this certification. And there's no prerequisites. So you don't have to have a route and switch CCNA to take this. And this was purposely done. A lot of people ask, why do some of the other NAs have prerequisites? And that's because this one's a bit different. You know, we're not built on iOS. We're built on NXOS. So this whole certification package has been built 
to be inclusive of all the technologies you need to know. And you can kind of see the ones listed there in the, uh, in the various comparisons. So we're going to be you know, touching um, 1000V, Nexus 1000V, Nexus 2000 Fabric Extenders, Cisco WAS, Cisco ACE, Cisco Unified Computing, B and C series. So there's quite a few technologies there that we're going to be touching in the NA level. And what you're going to find out is when you're building your labs, the equipment isn't that much different if you're looking then towards your NP or IE level. So yeah, we're going to go a bit deeper on some of the topics, but a lot of the equipment is going to be very similar between the three different uh, certification levels. So the two exams that you're going to have to sit and pass are the DCICN, which is the in this data center networking, which is really focused on you know your basic routing and switching topics. Okay, the very ge generic stuff that you would find on your basic CCNA that would be your route and switch. However, we're going to be more tailored towards NXOS and data center switches rather than iOS and Catalyst switches. The second exam you're going to have is the DCICT, and this is where we now dive really deep into a lot of the data center technologies. So we're going to start approaching things like unified computing and unified I.O. We'll look at fabric path and OTV and all those great topics there. Now at the NA level, even though we throw around some pretty technical terms, at the NA level, you're really only doing a little bit of theory and limited amounts of you know, expected troubleshooting um, and hands-on. And we'll kind of cover what you're going to be expected to know. Your certification is going to be valid for three years. And you can recertify it by writing a higher level exam, and that will recertify your NA. But hopefully with after three years, maybe you want to proceed on to your NP or IE level at that time. So time requirements. Everyone's going to study at a different pace, and it really is going to plan on how much time you can commit to. You know, do you have you know a full-time job? Are you a student? So whatever time of time you can you know you can um, devote to this, try and get a concrete schedule and try and stick to it. Set yourself a goal early on and say, okay, I plan to have my NA within X amount of months or X amount of weeks, and then try and see if you can commit to that. We kind of give an estimation of around 40 hours of reading per exam to really understand the concept. Now the first exam, because it has to do a lot with routing and switching, and it's really just NXOS versus iOS, if you're comfortable with a lot of the routing and switching concepts, or maybe you've already done your regular CCNA, you should be able to breeze through that exam fairly quickly. You know, you may have to do a little bit of brush ups on the differences between iOS and NXOS. But for the most part, it should be fairly quick. It'll be the second exam that gets into a, maybe a lot of new technologies and a little bit more deep dive into the data center uh, concepts. So your, your 40 hours is going to make that up between you know, reading materials, white papers, watching VODs, and webinars such as these will really help you out. You can't do these exams up without hands-on, and that's something that's very important. And it's, you know, I learned this the hard way when I was first trying to get my head around a lot of the NA concepts back years ago, it wasn't until I sat down at a, at a switch and started banging away at it and, you know, breaking it, fixing it, and figuring out why was, you know, why were these things happening. So you really want to make sure you can kind of set up yourself either a home or a lab at work if you can. You know, something obviously that's not production. And that's, that's something you can use to, you know, do setup configurations, a little bit of troubleshooting, and then just, you know, deploy features and services and see how, how you can, uh, how confident you are with these systems. So the first exam, this is just kind of um, right taken from the exam content itself. This is the overview. And these are the, really the four main sections of the DCICN exam. So a lot of it has to do with theory. You're going to find that these four topics are, again, are identical in wording to the route and switch CCNA. However, we're going to focus a little bit more on the NXOS side. But you know, theory is going to be theory. So if you're pretty confident with your route and switch capabilities, you're going to find this exam to be, you know, a lot of review. So things like you know, knowing VLANs, knowing your spanning tree, your OSI models, um, addressing as well. So if you're brand new to networking, um, network addressing can be a little bit difficult. You know, it's something that does take a little bit of practice to understand subnetting and varial length subnet masks. And of course, we've got the beautiful IPv6 now as well. So understanding that and how it works 
is going to be some of the fundamentals you're going to want to know taking on the um, NA levels. Now, once I get done that exam, then you get into the good stuff and you go, oh my gosh, look at all these topics. We've got storage, I've got unified fabric, I've got all these crazy words I've never heard about. And if you really just take your time and the way you want to approach your NA is just do it piece by piece. So start off on your fundamentals. Okay, sand and land. I've got some fabric path in there, some VPC, data center interconnects. You know, these are comp, you know, they, they look a little more scary than they are. Unified fabric, things like FCOE. And a lot of people coming in at this level have never touched fiber channel over Ethernet or may not know what it is. So this is a good primer to learn the basics of this new protocol that we use to help with our unified I.O. Just from our polls on the Facebook group, I found a lot of people coming into data center, really their biggest struggle is going to be with uh, storage networking. We find a lot of people, you know, have some kind of switching background or, you know, routing background, but it's the storage that's brand new to them and the concepts can be a lot different. So we want to make these, um, you know, very useful for you. And, uh, you know, this, well, it's not that bad. You don't have to learn all the ins and outs of storage. We just want to be able to teach you to speak the language and understand some small configuration items so you guys can do kind of an end-to-end -end boot from SAN or other tasks or similar. So when you take all these various topics, and they look very daunting, but just kind of eliminate, you know, all the verbiage there and say, okay, let me focus in now what's important. So here's your topics or your key words that you're going to want to spend the most time on. You know, things like, okay, storage networking isn't so bad. I want to know what my initiator target relationship is. I want to know about zoning. I want to know about vSAN. And again, take these one by one. And as long as you're breaking them down by each section, you'll find that, you know, it's going to flow very well for you. And it will make a lot of sense.